Batman experience. Batman experience. Batman experience. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings Week 9 Full Injury Report, plus some key positional injuries at running back and how that may affect the rankings and what you want to do with props, daily fantasy, whatever it may be, whether or not you want to start and sit someone like Devin Singletary this week. How high should he actually go in the rankings? Well, we'll work on that in terms of projections and where he factors out against the other running backs, plus a look at DraftKings ownership, our favorite props of the week, and a same-game parlay for the Frankfurt game that maybe we can start the day off on a winning streak. Wouldn't that be nice? Or lose all of our money. One of the two. Plus, maybe even cooking up some prize picks this week as well. So a ton on the slate. As a reminder, Tambo and the Ship It Nation crew are going to be live at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time Sunday morning on Mayo Media Network. So subscribe to this channel. They'll be answering your questions. And I'll be live with Cust and Pizzola 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time after the late Atlanta games in before Sunday Night Football. Taking your questions, recapping the week, looking ahead. We got a trivia contest. Cuts is eating pizza pockets, and Rob will be disgusted by the entire thing. It'll be good times. The Listeners League is also not yet full. There's 250 spots remaining as of right now. The link is in the description, so please go fill that up. Let's jump over to the Mayo Media newsletter, completely free, by the way, to join Mayo Media Substack if you're looking for it, or just hit the description. And I always send out the injury reports on... Saturday evening, sometimes Sunday morning, if we're, you know, kind of iffy on some of the things. Week 9 injuries at running back. Damian Pierce is out. Devin Singletary is starting. Amari DiMacarto is out for the Arizona Cardinals against the Cleveland Browns. Keontae Ingram expected to draw the start in that game. Clyde Edwards-Alaire is out for the Frankfurt game, and David Montgomery is still on bye week. He should return after the bye for the Lions, so goodbye 30 touches for Jameer Gibbs in the next game until Montgomery gets hurt again. At receiver, Robert Woods is out. Kendrick Bourne is out for the season. Devontae Parker is also out for the Patriots with a concussion. Drake London is out for the Falcons. Then Curtis Samuel and LaVisca Chenault are out for the Commanders and the Carolina Panthers. Michael Wilson, DJ Chark, Puka Nakua, Josh Downs, Josh Palmer are all game time decisions questionable. Hopefully a lot of that clears up by Sunday morning. Probably unlikely for Josh Palmer, considering that is a Monday night game. He and Gerald Everett were probably going to have to wait a little bit longer. So I wouldn't hold out for those guys because it seems like they're on the bad side. Although if Josh Palmer ends up practicing late on Saturday evening, if we get that report, then everything should be fine with him. Stupid West Coast time. It's always a problem sometimes with these injury reports. You can always get the rankings down in the description. They're completely updated or find them on DKNetwork.com. At tight end, Darren Waller is out. So is Cager. So Daniel Bellinger will be receiving the full amount of tight end compliment snaps with Daniel Jones back at quarterback. Brevin Jordan is out for the Houston Texans. Don't know about Everett, as mentioned. And Kylan Granson hasn't played in weeks with a concussion. Not quite sure what his status is for Indianapolis, so watch that Ogletree guy end up catching another touchdown. Quarterback is really where we're at right now in terms of the biggest news. So obviously, we have Kirk Cousins out for the season. Jaron Hall is starting for the Minnesota Vikings. Josh Dobbs, who was recently acquired in a trade, will back him up. Deshaun Watson, apparently he's okay now. He's going to start. Probably wouldn't start Deshaun Watson unless you really needed to. Rather start Daniel Jones, who is starting for the New York Giants against the Las Vegas Raiders, who just fired their coach and GM, by the way. Probably makes them better. Desmond Ritter has been benched. Taylor Heineke is starting. Matt Stafford, we still don't know whether or not he's playing. I'm guessing he's going to go. It's Brett Rippon, if not, so you still play Puka if he plays. You still play Cup, obviously. Daryl Henderson in a pinch, but it's not great news. So we'll see what happens. It's a great matchup. Green Bay's D sucks, and now they're actively trading guys away. Justin Fields practiced in a limited capacity on Friday, but is still doubtful for the game against New Orleans. T oh, Rich Uncle T-Bag is going to be starting, so man, maybe maybe Fields will field. Maybe ba Badgent will play so poorly, Fields will come in the game. Who knows? But when we get to the main prop section, Badgent is actually featured in there. Uh, James Garoppolo, now that he's a backup, has been benched. AOC is starting, so O'Connell uh, probably better in that game for the Raiders. And you have Kyler Murray. 
who's listed as doubtful, but he's off the injury report. Clayton Toon is expected to start in week nine. I'm guessing that's mainly for the purposes of saying, hey, we're playing Cleveland's defense. We have a terrible offensive line. Whoever is playing quarterback for us is going to get mauled in that game. Maybe not the best spot to bring back a guy coming off reconstructive knee surgery in his first start, maybe give him something a little bit easier. I have no idea who the Cardinals are playing next week because I don't want to look at the lines for next week, so I'm not cheating on the Sunday night show, but it's just a terrible situation. Arizona is under... They know they're not going anywhere this season. They're not challenging for a playoff berth. If you're going to wait this long, and you're going to play Kyler Murray way earlier than it seems like anyone thought that he was going to play. Most people figured he'd be back late in December, if at all this season, if they were going to tank. It does seem like he'll probably at least be starting next week. Why put him out against what might be the best defense in football? So that would probably be the best way to do it. Um, Not so great because, I mean, if he could have played last week, they get through Baltimore, they get through Cleveland. Those are the two top defenses uh, and will probably beat you up pretty badly. So again, a guy with knee surgery, not a great offensive line, probably don't want to risk it with Kyler Murray, considering they're A, going to find out if Kyler Murray is going to be their quarterback of the future, or B, build up his stock large enough that you can draft a quarterback early and then actually get something, something good good for Kyler Murray because Lord knows there's a few of these teams looking at that quarterback injury report that could use Kyler Murray at the moment if he's still Kyler Murray. So they got to showcase that at some point. All right, let's jump over to runthesims.com and take a look at some of the different situations, mainly Devin Singletary, Keontae Ingram, and the Washington offense without Curtis Samuel playing, and whether that's a boon for Curtis Samuel, or not Curtis Samuel, of course it's not a boon for him, don't play Curtis Samuel, whether or not it's a boost for Jamison Crowder, Deami Brown, Logan Thomas, we'll see how it goes. So let's first take a look at Devin Singletary here. I've gone in and adjusted um, what I think that the shares are going to be. Now, in full disclosure, the Run the Sims baseline simulations were not as high on Devin Singletary as I am. Now, you can see he's getting 12% ownership right now on DraftKings for the main slate, but I didn't think that 63% of the rushing share was out of the question. Do I think it's going to be like a 60-40 split between him and Mike Boone? No, not really. I think it's going to be a lot of Devin Singletary. He could have upwards of 20 touches in this game. So instead of putting Singletary at 50% and Boone at 30%, I just went 63, 15, and then 11% for C.J. Stroud. I kept Stroud 20% in the touchdown market share market, moved Singletary to 52%, Boone at 15%, 1% for, oh, the goon, Der Ulo Guna. Bali, that guy who catches passes for the Texans sometimes out of the backfield. Then you still have to figure out uh, Odele, John Beck, or Andrew Beck, the tight end, who just randomly gets touchdown share. We have, we have him at 2.5% with 2% of the carries right now in the rushing share for the Texans. It's not a great matchup against Tampa Bay, but it's also not a bad matchup at the same time, especially if he can get himself working in the receiving game, which we have seen. Now, the goon is probably the one who will eventually come in. Actually, I should probably change that, put him at like five percent i doubt they're bringing mike boone in the game just to pass to him so we'll keep him at two percent right now so we'll say eight percent of the receiving share for singletary two for mike boone five for the goon with a four two and one market share of touchdown receptions don't really care about that because it's really collins dell noah brown that's where we're going with that so that is devin singletary of what i have adjusted everything to i don't think that 63 percent of the texans rushing share in carries is out of the question that frankly that could be low for all that we know maybe it's way too high and i'm dead wrong but that's where we're at right now uh the other one i was going to show you was Keontae ingram in this arizona game we'll see where we have him put up right now we have clayton tune tune at 21 percent of the market share of rushes did not realize the tune man looney tunes ended up running that much but here we are so we have Keontae ingram with 51 percent of the market share tony jones jr at 19 percent. i don't think that tony jones is going to get that much so i'm going to drop him to 13 and i'm going to drop clayton tune to a very conservative 17 percent of the rushing market share just to put another 10 percent on to ingram because i think he'll end up being the true lead here i'll put tony jones in at 10 percent of the touchdowns and make that an even 45 
45% for Keontae Ingram, 6.7% of the receiving share, 4% for Tony Jones. That seems pretty good. We'll see what happens with Damian Williams. Um, he's a practice squad player. He has a foot injury and has been placed on injured reserve. So I guess we're not going to see Damian Williams. Good thing I checked the notes. Run the sims.com slash mayo, by the way. We'll get you uh, everything you need to know on this front. I just really want to see what we're doing here with Jerome Ford, Kareem Hunt, and Pierre Strong. 37%, 31%, and 10%. All right, that makes sense. It's hard to pick and choose between those guys. The problem here is like... Cleveland has been giving up a lot of yardage on the ground. The problem is it's usually coming on the road. Now they're back at home. So I don't know how much they're actually going to run with Ingram. But anyway, those were the two that I wanted to go and readjust. And then we can eventually run the Sims and see where they actually rate out versus everyone. But I did want to take a look at Washington, as I made mention, only because... I just wanted to see what we're what we're doing here in terms of the receiving share. So Jamison Crowder at around 13%. Yeah, it probably tracks. Let's see. 24% for McLaurin, 16% for Crowder, 13%. For yeah, 13% for Crowder, 16% for Dotson, sorry. And then Logan Thomas, 16% with John Bates, the Bates Motel at 8% of the receiving share. Okay, that actually seems very reasonable to me if you wanted to make Logan Thomas a better player or Jameson Crowder. Say it right, Frenchie. You could boost them up if you wanted to. So let's just run the Sims on those. See what happens. See where that puts Singletary. Again, with 61%, and we boosted up Ingram. So if we just look at the optimals for the week, that actually does place Singletary, because he's only 4,300. This is why it's important. Because between him and Shuba Hubbard, that is sort of a discussion that we're going to have this week. So when I ran these without adjustments, Chupa Hubbard kept popping up in terms of the optimals. What this is telling me is that if Singletary has a good game, it is him that you're going to want over the baseline of Chuba Hubbard. It drops him down to an optimal rate of only 12%, which puts him at a severe negative leverage because when we started the week on DraftKings, it was either Chuba Hubbard as the pay down option or like nothing. Then you're using like Jerome Ford and those losers. Um, but now you can see Devin Singletary at $4,300 since he opened up. He's still only 12% ownership. That boosts him up to 15% optimal rate. I have a sneaking suspicion that once we get to Sunday and you see lineups turned over, you turn the cards over, that Singletary will be higher owned than Chuba Hubbard. Uh, that's just my guess. I have no real basis to that, but that feels like where the, the winds are sailing right now. In terms of optimal rate, Kamara, Jonathan Taylor, Bijan Robinson. If you could somehow finagle a way where you didn't play Singletary or Chuba Hubbard, and you got to work in three of these guys. So let's say three of Kamara, Taylor, Bijan, or Barkley, one of three of those four players. I think it's going to make you pretty unique because everyone's going to want to find the spot to pay down. Demario Douglas is probably going to be that guy. But as you can see, the optimal receiver this week is Adam Thielen with Demario Douglas only coming in sixth in that category. But of anyone lower than, geez, $5,000, he is by far the best play. Christian Watson at 49 comes in, 11th or 13th on that list i mean he's a shot in the dark and no clue how good jordan love is going to be and after that you're dealing with like michael thomas at 4700 dollars. then it's like dj chark who is dealing with an elbow injury so watch out for him and then like wendale who has like the lowest upside of anyone in football juju at 31 elijah moore maybe actually might be a bit more decent now that donovan people's jones is out of the equation but when we're thinking about optimal rates that's what's where we're getting at here let's go to the projections though just to take a look at them because i think this is important so as you can see on the screen camara taylor barkley Bijan, jacobs swift pollard then singletary with that minimal adjustment that i made what does that give him against the bucks that gives him 16 carries for 78 yards and a third of a touchdown. That gives him two catches for 15 yards. That's all he has done. And on this crappy slate, that actually projects him for exactly the same amount of fantasy points as Kenneth Walker, who's $7,000. It is objectively a bad play this week, although he is like the only leverage that you can find at the top of running back, which is pretty funny to think about. Rashad White is there at 13.6. Uh, Chuba Hubbard is just behind that 14.3. So it makes it a slightly better situation for Singletary he's gonna he's projected now to score more points by 0.3 of fantasy points than Chuba Hubbard now when I first ran everything with Devin Singletary he was actually down actually where Keontae Ingram is right now he was right around the Zach Moss Roshan Johnson Daryl Henderson he came in at 10.8 fantasy points which did not make him a very good play and it's right around where Keontae Ingram is right now who's funny 
very similar to Devin Singletary, but Singletary has the better matchup and the better usage over time. We know that he's actually pretty good. So what we're seeing for a projection for Keontae Ingram now with what I custom adjusted to is 16 carries for 60 yards, 0.4 of a touchdown. So a higher touchdown rate in that game, but only 1.3 catches for seven yards. That gives him 10.8 fantasy points, which puts him you know, a little bit above Alexander Madison, a little bit below Daryl Henderson the third. So if you're wondering where the backups actually come in, in terms of rankings, in terms of projections, that's where it's going to be. That is behind both Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt, if you need to know. At tight end, if we go and look at it, of where Logan Thomas is going to come in, it's funny. Jake Ferguson projects, and this is just main slate stuff here, so no No Travis Kelsey, no Sunday morning, no Sunday night, no Monday night as a part of this. Just the 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. games. I'm looking at the main slate right now. Logan Thomas uh, comes in at 7%. He's the fifth highest projected tight end on the slate at 9.8 fantasy points. Four catches for 41 yards and .2 of a touchdown will get you all the way up to 9.8. It's worth noting only because... New England struggles over the middle of the field a lot of the times. uh, Just And they have just such a glut of injuries at on the defensive side of the ball right now that you Sam Howell might actually have Sam Howell's going to have to get it early because he has no offensive line to speak of but it's not all that bad when we're thinking about the cheap tight ends it's basically Jake Ferguson at 4,000 Logan Thomas at 35 and then you have Trey McBride at $3,700 Komet and Joku they're all right around the same part Komet's projected for the lowest at $3,900, but if you just go to $3,500, the cheapest that we're looking at that projects the best is going to be Logan Thomas this week against the New England Patriots in terms of fantasy points. We'll see where Jamison Crowder ends up coming in. Jamison Crowder, there he is. Let's see, Jamison Crowder, 7.1 fantasy points is what he projects out to do. So 3.2 catches on five targets for 32 yards and point one of a touchdown. Now, he came in for Curtis Samuel last week and taking a look at the routes run, he was playing primarily out of the slot in the Curtis Samuel role, but still only ran like 17 routes out of the slot. He ended up with, I think, seven catches on seven targets, almost 100 yards and a touchdown in this game. That is pretty aberrational. Essentially, what he was saying is that for every route in the slot that he ran, he saw a target 40% of the time from Sam Howell. Is that going to keep itself up? Well, if it does keep up, he's going to be like the best play on the slate. Unfortunately, that is such an outlier number that it doesn't mean it can't happen two games in a row, but it's unlikely to happen two games in a row. Now, maybe he can find himself continuously and always being the third wide receiver in third wide, three wide receiver sets. You keep Dotson back on the outside. We don't move him around the offense. Crowder is firmly in the slot. Then yeah, maybe instead of running 17 routes, he runs 35 routes. Or even last game against the Eagles, it was like 47, 46, 40 for McLaurin, Dotson, and Logan Thomas. Like those are the big three that are always on the field for the commanders. If Crowder can get himself into that, maybe he's a nice pivot off of both Logan Thomas and Demario Douglas. But that's probably not something that I really want to mess around with, unless you were in giant GPPs and you were targeting that game. Like, if you were playing Sam Howell, Sam Howell, Logan Thomas, Jamison Crowder is a pretty unique way to build your DraftKings lineup, and it saves you so much money to go jam in, you know, a top-end receiver along with two top-end running backs, and all of a sudden you're good to go. So to Put that into some context. Jamison Crowder is projected you know, ahead of K.J. Osborne, ahead of Trey Palmer and Darnell Mooney, but still behind 2-2 Atwell. Marquise Goodwin, uh, who's projected for two catches for 34 yards, uh, and Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, with both Lockett and DK Metcalf playing. Kaderil Hodge is another one. Like He's going to be filling in for Atlanta. Him and Van Jefferson are right around like 7.9, 8.3 points. None of these guys are great plays. I am curious what the demario douglas one is though demario douglas rates out pretty well we got him for five catches on seven and a half targets and 61 yards for 14.5 fantasy points that also comes with a half a rushing attempt for 1.7 yards we know that's you know either going to be way too low or way too high but that is how projections end up shaking themselves out now let's get to everyone's favorite part of the show the prop sniper brought to you 
by Run the Sims.com code Mayo will get you 10% off. I have played an inordinate amount of props this week, and it looks like there's a new one that just popped up while we were doing the show. The highest rated one on the board right now. We can find it at DraftKings Sportsbook. It is Kaderil Hodge, who we just mentioned in the projections. I guess they did not have him in. Over 1.5 receptions is currently pay- playing paying, sorry, plus 124 with a 74.7% win rate. It's the highest rated prop of the week. As of right now, the simulations continue to run, as always, on the Prop Sniper. Uh, and props always get added to the Prop Sniper as we get going. It loves, for the third straight week, the Prop Sniper loves and the Sims love Jalen Hurts' rushing yardage because he's not popping up on the injury report. Yet when you watch the games, you know that he's actively not running. So 28.5 is like the lowest you're ever going to find Jalen Hurts' rushing prop. But I just don't trust it because it feels like it's like five yards or it's 110 yards. Now, maybe it's so low that you feel like he's forced to run in this game. But they were trailing a lot in that Washington game, and he just wouldn't take off. So maybe an extra week of rest is going to be good for him. But I I just it's not for me. Uh, I've been burned on it two weeks in a row. So maybe I'm letting my bias play itself into there. But he just looks hurt to me until I can see that he's healthy. I don't want to play it on the rushing yardage. Or maybe he is healthy. And has decided, you know what, I'm a pretty good passer as it is. I can throw for 350 and four touchdowns even against Dallas. I don't need to run and put myself into a position to get hurt. But 28 and a half is so low. 27 and a half with some more juice in some places too. This is the big one I've played. Well, there's two big ones that I've played. Uh, I wrote this up in the Wednesday night newsletter. Again, the newsletter, always free to join. I had this one in here if you wanted to hit it early and the juice keeps going up for it. It's not as low as I thought it would get. I think this is eventually going to get beat down. As you can see, it's been beat down at some places to 10.5, but most places are still hanging at 13.5. It is the under for Tyson Bajon or Bajant for his rushing yardage. Like He ran against the Raiders. He had three rushes for 24 yards and his other start, you know, he had negative rushing yards, four rushes for negative one yards uh, because he's taking knees at the end of the half because they don't trust him. And if there's one commonality between the Raiders, the Chargers, and the Saints, who they're playing this week, just very low pressure rate or very low blitz percentage teams. Uh, the pressure rate not super high for any of those teams either. It's funny to think about it that way. The difference is that the Chargers and Saints are actually pretty decent against the run, where the Raiders have given up the second most rushing yards in the league. So it was one big run for 12 yards that really did it did him in to hit his over. And even against this line, that still wouldn't get him to the over. So they're not having any designed run. So it's not the most fun sweat in the world to sit there and basically do this like you're watching a horror movie the entire time. Every time he drops back and you see you know, one guy come in, he makes a miss. There's no one down the field. It's like, oh my God, is he going to take off and start running? It's part of the sweat. We've been doing pretty good with these unders on lower numbers, so that is the way that I want to go. Uh, and then I cooked up some fun for the Frankfurt game. Same game parlays for the Frankfurt game. So Kadero Hodge, Tyson, Bajon. I also like this, Justin Watson. And this is me personally loving it. And there's Deshaun Watson. Good for him. Uh, let's see here. Let's just go down a little bit more. There's Justin Watson. Anytime TD, 16.5. That's not so bad. I played him first and last touchdown, parlayed with his over. (laughs) We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Where's his receiving yards? See, there's not a whole lot of receiving yardage up for him right now. So let's go to Justin Watson. Just sort by Justin Watson. You can always find all this at the top. That's not how you spell Justin because I'm an idiot. Justin, Justin. I guess that's just not coming up at all. Justin Herbert, Justin, no. Okay, so let's do it this way. Let's go Watson, and we'll go game, or go with teams, and we'll go with Kansas City. That makes things much easier for us. So receiving yardage, it's, it's a borderline score for his. It likes the under, although the projection is over. The median tends to be under. So here's the big deal, and I did the grunt work on this one for you. So Justin Watson has played six full games so far this season. He got hurt. In the Denver game, and then we didn't get to see any of them. He returned last week in the Denver game. So what do you notice here? Against a great pass defense in the Jets, he had one catch for one year, one catch on one target for five yards. That would actually hit the under of a 17 and a half this week. But here's the thing: look at every other game that he's played. Way over that number. In fact, his longest catch has been over the number of 17 and a half. So what I have done, and you can find these, all of these in the 
There's my t- see. There's my Tyson Bajon unders. I put it at two different books. I caught it at one book early at minus one fifteen. Then I can't at a site where you can't cash out. And then I saw it again at minus one ten. So I had to jump back in at the better number. So Justin Watson to score record twenty five or more receiving yards in Frankfurt against the Dolphins plays pays plus one forty five. As you can see in, every, in the five of the six games that he's finished, his longest reception is over twenty five yards. Twenty six. He, like, he just runs down the field and Mahomes hits him. Do I worry that he gets paired up on Ramsey and they don't look his way? Yes, that's always a possibility. There's a reason this is paying plus money when you're looking at it. However, I do think it is a really nice spot here uh, to try to tackle him. It's one catch. Hopefully he gets it on the first drive and we're good to go. And I think that the guy that ultimately gets shut down is actually Marquez Veldez Scantling. So the under 16, I mean, under 16 and a half for him is usually a good play anyway, and under one and a half receptions, but he is the receiver on the Chiefs. So far, so far this season was predominantly played on the left side of the offense, which would be against Jalen Ramsey. And look, Patrick Mahomes might try to light up Jalen Ramsey and make him look foolish. Just because Mac Jones didn't want to look his way and had no success looking his way doesn't mean Patrick Mahomes won't do it, but he might at the same time just take the easier route. So I've cooked up some same game parlays here. So uh, the bigger one, uh, the four-legger, is Watson over 17 and a half yards, Valdez Scantling under 16 and a half yards, Jeff Wilson over 19 and a half rushing yards, Isaiah Pacheco 56.5 rushing yards over. $100 turns into $1,300 on 12 to 1. This one, the other one I've cooked up is the 30 to 1. So it's Pacheco over, Wilson over, uh, Pacheco under three and a half receptions, Valdez Scantling under 16 and a half receiving yards, and then Justin Watson over 25 receiving yards. $35 pays 1,800 at 30 to 1 odds. And then I got really degen because this is how you lose all your money back to the to the sports books by doing stupid stuff like this. But hey, let's have a day, all right? Let's go with same game parlay. Justin Watson to score the first touchdown. Justin Watson over 25 receiving yards. Then we also have Justin Watson to score. It's supposed to be to score the last touchdown. Uh, I, apparently I've paid, played the same one twice. That's supposed to read last touchdown uh, and first touchdown. So it looks like I've just played the same one twice, but I'm going to change that to Lyle. Cash that out and play it to last touchdown. It also pays 50 to one. Now you're saying, Pat, what would happen if he scores, you know, gets over 25 yards and then doesn't score the touchdown like in, in between? Well, then I'm not too worried about it because I have the big bet on over to uh, over 25 yards. And it's a part of all of my different parlays as we go through everything. So that's what I'm doing with the same game parlays this week. The other thing that I wanted to bring up was prize picks. Let's get on some prize picks because we do have that tool as well at Run the Sims for prize picks, but sometimes everything's a little bit different on prize picks as it is versus some of the props over at the sports book. And there's two in particular that really stand out this week. Justin Herbert over rushing attempts is an 81% percent, yeah, percent chance winner. Chuba Hubbard is still at eight and a half fantasy points. It seems really low for a guy that's probably going to play 60, 65% of the snaps. We saw he projected out at 14 fantasy points as a median projection. And then you have the rest of them too, like Heineke over rushing yards I really like as well even though it's still 11 and a half uh, that's another one you can play you can almost play Heineke you can do that as the same game parlay Kaderil Hodge over 1.5 receptions Heineke over 11 rushing yards may have to jump back in and get on that as well so we can take a look at it within our system say Herbert over Chuba Hubbard over those are the two we're going to play one of those is on Monday night uh, we can see our success rate. What do we have in the EV calculator over here on the right-hand side? Odds to win that is 64%. Uh, so it gives us a positive EV on a hundred, yeah, almost almost 100% EV on a $100 play. So let's go throw that one in. See if we can win some monies this week. What was that? Fantasy points for Chuba Hubbard, 8.5. And then we're going to throw on... What did I say the other one was? Rushing attempts for Justin Herbert over 2.5. We'll go with more and more. By the way, code DOP, you can find this link in the description. Code DOP at prizepicks.com will get you a deposit match of up to $100. So you deposit $100, they give you $100, you're good to go. Uh, let's go, what do we got here? Pays 3 to 1. Yeah, let's go 335 pays 
$1,005 on a 335 entry for Hubbard over 8.5 fantasy points and Herbert over 2.5 rushing attempts. Boom, we're in with that one. And you can see that I actually played another one here. I played a six banger. It's 125 to win 3,125. Justin Watson over receiving yards. Velda Scantling under receiving yards. Uh, Badgent less than... 12.5 rushing yards, Herbert, more rushing attempts, Chuba Hubbard over fantasy score, and then Taylor Heineke, as I mentioned, more than 11.5 rushing yards. Six out of six will pay that amount, and I think I win double my money if five of the six hits on that front. So that's what we're looking at for the prize picks this week. Jump back over to Run the Sims one more time to check out the DraftKings. Tambo and I are both trying to qualify for the finals of the King of the Beach on DraftKings this week. So come root us on. Tambo has three entries. And if you watch the DraftKings show, he said he might give away up to $30,000 based off this tournament. King of the Beach, that is. So this week and two weeks from now at the actual final. So I would tune into Friday's show on the Pat Mayo Experience to figure out what the hell he's talking about. Playing the Listener's League. We're well, here as well. That link is down in the description. And code Mayo at runthesims.com will get you access to all of these tools to play around with them. And again, they'll update once actives and inactives are released. What I really wanted to go through was running back, ownership projections, Camara, Jacobs, Bijan, Chuba. So Chuba Hubbard, 19%. Devin Singletary, 12%. These were the two that I was talking about before. I think that those flop by the time that we actually get to Sunday, just because people will talk themselves into Singletary. You get to save $700 and see where that puts you elsewhere. It looks like Pollard, Stevenson, Rashad White. Who's like the best? Who is the best overall running back no one is using? I guess it's Ken Walker. Yeah, Ken Walker, 5%. Aaron Jones, 8%. Gus Edwards, 6%. Zach Moss, 1%. I think it's a terrible run defense. Foreman, 1%. Kareem Hunt, 5.6. Madison, 1%. Madison, 1% actually isn't terrible either. I'm not going to use him, but if you wanted to use him, you know, go for it. That kind of thing. We'll see what Ingram's coming in at, too, now that DeMarcato is officially out. Let's see, $4,300. Keontae Ingram coming in at 6%. All right. So I don't think that he gets to 6%. I think people will just play Devin Singletary instead. Maybe that's the move. Instead of using Singletary, use Ingram in large field tournaments. Be curious to see how that actually ends up shaking out. At receiver, it's A.J. Brown, it's C.D. Lamb, and it is Demario Douglas. Yeah, they're there. One, two, three. Brown, Douglas, and C.D. Lamb. Olave and McLaurin popping up there as well. So the cheap receiver, everyone in the world, one-fifth of DraftKings users are using is Demario Douglas this week. It actually gives him negative leverage because he's on, only in the optimal 15% of the time. So he projects out really well. He projects out for 0.01 more than Chris Olave does, who is $2,300 more. Uh, per the base projections, Brown, Lamb, Thielen, Devontae Adams still uh, the highest projected of uh, Chris Godwin at 7,000 and DJ Moore uh, at 5% and 6% are the best of the single digit guys. Amari Cooper as well. So 5, 6, and 9% for those guys. Puka also rates out really highly, but obviously he's on the injury report. So you have to keep an eye on him. Other than that, at tight end, it's Andrews, Ferguson, Hawkinson, those types of guys. You know, let's see, Njoku, Andrews, McBride. Schultz, Hawkinson, Goddard, Pitts, Thomas, Ferguson, and then nobody. Like the very cheap, cheap guy everyone seems to be gravitating towards is Daniel Bellinger. I absolutely cannot do that with the Giants offense. Like I'd rather just play Daniel Jones and hopefully something good happens out of that. I'll probably end up playing Barkley in that game just because they keep feeding him the ball. But other than that, Giants D most owned, followed by Patriots and Packers, then Saints. I like the Rams defense at $2,600. I think they're going to get it's just a nightmare matchup with Aaron Donald coming at Jordan Love, who sucks. So keep that in mind. Points per dollar wise, it's going to be the Giants, then the Patriots, then the, did that actually sort. Wow. Points per dollar wise and projected ownership actually follow. The Colts, the Rams, the Cardinals are the next three in points per dollar. I mean, Cardinals against Deshaun Watson isn't terrible in case he just, his shoulder is absolutely cooked. Uh, and the Falcons probably, they don't rate out well in terms of points per dollar, but I would guess that, yeah, they're going to be relatively popular. They're just so expensive. But for a cheap defense that, that fewer people are using, it's Rams D at $2,600 for me. And then quarterbacks, it's Hurts, it's Lamar. It's all your favorites. Baker is the best points per dollar play on the board. Hurts, Lamar, Dak, 
Mayfield, Sam Howell. Those are your top five. In terms of ownership, you can get all that information at run, runthesims.com. This is Saturday evening, so obviously the numbers are going to update throughout the course of the evening, then again in the morning, then again after inactives are released and more information is put as we aggregate a lot of the ownership. So hopefully we don't lose our shirts this week. Hopefully I win all the props. Hopefully you guys tail and you win too, or use the prop sniper and you know pick and choose which ones that you like. Once again, run the sims. Dot com code mayo for 10% off the prop sniper it's the cheapest tool we have as well because it's just the prop sniper and the prize picks tool so it's a great value it's 13 bucks a week and as you can see most people play more than 13 dollars per bet on a prop so you might as well get the good ones at prop sniper at run the sims.com smash like and play in the listeners league and sub to mayo media network both as a newsletter and as a youtube channel and you can tune in live, 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time for Tambo and the Ship It Nation crew, the me, Pizzola, and Cust, Sunday evening, 7.15 p.m. Eastern, to recap the games and look ahead to week number 10. It's going to be week number 10. Crazy stuff, right? I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time.